Welcome to Causing the Effect, a podcast focused on the exploration of your mind, body, and spirit. Yo, what's going on? Causing the Effect. We have four-time, 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 four-time guest appearance, Carmen Del Mastro Nooch. Uh, we were talking about the Royal Rumble, sports specialist for Brace. We're going to get into all that shit. But, yo, uh, Royal Rumble, what did you think? I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, the uh, Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn stuff is just Emmy worthy, bro. It bro, is. It's great. It's amazing. That shit, like up to that point, I don't know why you start. Once you start the Rumble first, I was like, okay, The Rock's out. Now, I don't know if, if you were falling for that. I was all in. I'm like, Yo, no, Rock's coming. I wasn't. All no. right. I, I was like trying to have some hope because the Rumble, under underwhelming, I thought. Like they blew all the surprises. It was just basic. Everything was just kind of laid up. I felt like it was a safe rumble for the new regime. Yeah. So that's all it was. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Cody winning. Him and uh, Gunther doing the little match at the end was awesome. So, How do you feel about Cody? I like Cody. I like him better as a heel, too, because he could get away with oh, it. But because he's a fucking heel. Is. He's like an asshole. Yeah, he he's is. a beautiful <laughs> blonde. Bro. I'm, I'm, I love Cody, but I like heel Cody better. And I know yeah. – they're working him to give him like you know the father's completion of the title and do all this shit, but he'll turn heel at some point. Now the the Sami Zayn shit, I was not watching until like I think the last time you came when we were talking about it. Sami Zayn, bro, like I think it was he was like an accessory to the to um the bloodline, and then out of nowhere that first day when he was in Montreal like six months ago, everything changed. He was the fucking man. And now oh, yeah. I want him to have the title, but I don't think they're doing that. I think they're setting him up to fight at Elimination Chamber. Did you hear about this? Oh, yeah. He's fighting Reigns at Chamber. So he's not going to lose, obviously, at Chamber. Sammy? Yeah. No, I mean, he's not going to win. He's, he's not going to win. No, I think they're setting up him and Owens versus the Usos. Because oh. the storytelling with Jay, and now Jay's hasn't been there, so... I feel like they're setting that story up. I mean, that's the only way they flip it so the crowd doesn't turn on uh, Cody at WrestleMania. But right? How, so. You're going to give Cody both titles? I mean, you kind of have to at this you point. Have, bro, they, but Roman's had these titles for, but I looked, like 700-something days. That's, yeah, that's I mean, insane. Well, the thing is, like, you do the whole, you know, I've just been hearing stuff like, oh, you have Roman drop one on one night, one on the other. It just, like, takes the, you know, the whole show out of yeah, whack. you can't, you can't you do can't. that. Listen, has if, to the be Rock, one. if The Rock was involved, maybe if you had a bit, like, bro, who's you going to lose to Sammy one day and then somebody, it doesn't make any, I want Sammy to, to get what's done, but if he gets a title, and even to, ne- like, now you can see, he's, like, part of that upper echelon, and nobody, I feel like everybody backstage, the old school guys, they laughed at him, and now it's like, yo, he could maybe not carry a company for 10 years, but he could, like, be the top guy for six months. Give him a title. Give him give him an IC title. He already had yeah, it, man, but... They're in a great position. They were a company that was stressed for baby faces for a long time. Now they have two. Two top baby faces in Zayn and Cody, so, hey, they're doing something right. Bro, this fucking you you know you know what Vince was doing behind the scenes at the with the yeah, board yeah. and all this stuff, bro. Like it's he, just he, wild. <laughs> bro, it's the only public company I've seen that is that large. I think they're valued what four or five billion dollars. And like he's still in control because there's the common stock, which people say I own WWE. That's like 30%. That's the lowest of any publicly traded company. Him and class B people own 63%, which is Stephanie McMahon, Shane McMahon. Triple H, it's like they own it regardless. So yeah. he went, he went in there, and told the board, "If you guys don't remake me president, I'm gonna sue you." And then the the rights deal is up in six months, and you're not allowed to sign a rights deal if you're being sued. So he he really just hold, hold, and then they said yes, and he fired everybody from the board. He's a <laughs> psycho. Per- I love him because he's just a sick person, like um. Him and Dana White are very similar to me. Um, yeah. But it's really, like, insane seeing how he, like, the whole time he had this plan, I think. I think he just said, I have to step away because of the woman stuff, and then I'm going to go do my whole shtick. He is a one-of-one. One. <laughs> it's, it's putting it kindly. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what else happened to that? The woman stuff, no. 
Uh, I don't do the woman stuff. I was hyped for Sasha Banks or Sasha Monet, whatever her name is, in yeah. NJPW. Did you see it? I did. I thought it was very strange. I thought it was awkward. I, it didn't click. She's a she's a weirdo. The way she was speaking sounded like she was drinking like what I'm drinking. She sounded retarded. It, it would have been better if she spoke in Japanese. So that would have went over a lot better. They could have taught her a few things. I mean, I'm figured it wasn't the uh, a last minute deal. I figured she knew she was going there for a while. They could have taught her a few things. It would have just came off a little bit better because they had her talking very slow. So it would, you know, catch up with the crowd and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, but yeah. it was just, it, it didn't go over well. And the hair was interesting choice too. Horrible. Horrible with the fire flames. Like I think <laughs> and people have to like they forget, like in Japan, you don't clap regardless. Like so you can't tell if yeah. it's good or bad. But when Jericho came, uh when he went to NGPW after WWE and did the the pain maker, people lost their fucking minds because it's Jericho. So I don't know what she's doing. I think everybody's thinking that they're like a little too big for their britches because she could sort of wrestle, but her promos have always not been very good. And when you put anybody in a program with like Becky, Charlotte. They're gonna look good. So I, I love I love Sasha. I smash. But yeah. like, I don't know. I don't know. That, that was a <laughs> that was that was a weird that was a weird situation for me. I don't know. Um, how are you doing though? What is going on? I'm good, man. I've been busy. I feel a little burnt out at the moment, work wise. It's time for a, an actual vacation pretty soon. So, but uh, yeah, man. The, the work schedule hasn't slowed down. Haven't missed a beat been taking on some more endorsement things and brand deals and using the personality on social media with the microphone and whatnot. So we're making I, fun of people that I, use the I see you. I see you. Um making fun of people <laughs> and making fun of yourself. How has the how has it been like doing the do you feel like selling shit? Because you do it pretty naturally. And bro, Isapure is one of yours one of your sponsors. Dimatize. Dimatize. Whatever it is, the fruity pebble shit is fantastic. <laughs> oh I know. I have like 12. They just sent me like, like 12 boxes of it. I'll have to ship you some of it. Send me some and everybody will put the link below or whatever. Use what's the what's the code? Nooch or Carmen? I don't or... have a code, which is one thing that I think is cool. Like I don't have to do the whole promo oh, code good. in the bio type deal because I mean, there's a lot of people who take themselves way too serious in our profession. They have a 10% promo code for Bang Energy and they're just like, oh, you're the smart guy that sells Bang Energy and it's bio. But that's besides the point. Um, I don't have to do the promo. I just get actual. <laughs> And it's fine. <laughs> how are they tracking how you do with the sponsorship then? We work with a – there's a like a second-party uh, platform, third-party, whatever you want to call it. And we have to upload our content onto that. It gets approved, and then, then we can um, send it out. So, oh, so they're checking how many impressions Yeah, they it check it. Oh, yeah. shit. I mean, bro, it looks yeah. like you've been, you've been like doing – like – I don't understand. Like you're always moving around, and I see you hopping on one. Dude, you were pushing a sled while hopping on a one leg, and then jumping a leg bound, baby. Bro, everything you do, I look and I'm like, I can't even do this. Like the unilateral work that you like. How would you convince? Because I get these emails from people, like, I want to start in the performance based, but I don't know where to start. When you start the athletic movements, like where would somebody begin? Should they just start without doing – because like your shit just scares me. Like I can't do it. It scares you. But you look so limited. No, I mean it's all it, – it, it's a lot of work, man. I think I, I've – Nooch, you're not wearing any – you're not wearing any bands on your knees. You're not – like no, my I'm knees good. hurt. My I'm knees good. hurt looking. <laughs> I'm 35, man. I'm going to be 36 this year, so I'm good. The knees are good. I, I could – I could – Steal a couple more bases if I needed to. If anybody needs a, I could you know, a little pinch that. runner, yeah. If I need to, but but I like no, to show you. No, go. Well, on, I think it's, it's no, no. Sorry, it's like it's it's something that I've done for a long time, right? I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. So when people, I get it all the time, and not to sound cocky or whatever, it's just like oh, the the constant thing is like oh, you make this look way easy, and I always my response is always like, well, that's why you're here, and that's why you're learning from me. I mean, I've kind of been in, in like bedded into my system from a young age of like, you have to do these things right, X, Y, and Z. It almost looks like robotic. It's like, could be advanced, but to me, it is just like something I had to learn, had to understand how to move properly, had to like take this all in. It's not just something that I picked up doing overnight, right? This has been 
hours upon hours upon years and years of like studying, learning, moving, testing, moving out and just like kind of building what I do and how I do it. Like a lot of the stuff that I put in my stories is all most of the time too. Sometimes it looks like some random ass shit that's in my stories that I'll put like movement wise because that's what it is kind of too. It's just like me, what's going on in my brain for that day outside of like the normal deadlift, bench press, hinge, pull, squat, everything for that day because I'm still, I'm obviously we're doing that. That doesn't go anywhere. But yeah. at the same time, my brain kind of works in different ways, I would like to think, than some other people. So a lot of the movements that I'll put in my story, if there's something you haven't seen before, that's kind of my thought process for the day. If someone's just like trying to figure something out or just like working on something for an athlete, you know, something specific for an athlete that I want to put into the program. So, yeah, no. And I like that you mix it up between like solo, like the expert you doing it and then teaching a person to do it. But then also like the, the way that you represent it is like, if you want speed and power, then right. just do this. And it seems that everything, like, but before I get there, when you were, cause this, this was the nineties. Then you started learning the shit. You were in your teens, whatever. And yeah. Like early two thousands. Like so, I really got into it. Like when I was 13, 14. So you were introduced the right way. Like this is yeah. this is what performance specialized training. So you were never a bro of lifting. You were like a dork in the gym, knowing how I want to get faster for baseball. I want to do it this way, or X Y Z. Well, well, it was different. Like my pops like, taught me a lot of things, and I, I, we've had this conversation. But like my pops taught me what he was taught as a fighter. So I mean, and then taking bits and pieces and just kind of layering it from there. So you know, you take what happen and like kind of at like an extreme measure right because back in the day it's like pain and gain like you know yeah it's a different <laughs> no pain, style. No gain. it's like fucking do it or you know don't do it one way or the other so you took that and you kind of take bits and pieces of that and how their programming was and you know you kind of get away from the murder fit and you put a little bit more logic behind it where it's you know the quality over just constant you know, a constant pounding or a constant like beating up of your body. So always finding ways to adapt to finding ways to get better. And, you know, I just think without that lesson and like without those lessons growing up and learning and being able to tolerate the type of training, mm -hmm. did it make me better? Sure. Maybe. Do we know for sure? Like they didn't like put a stress on my body. Cause I was like, we talked about, I was always somebody who struggled with injuries um, throughout my baseball career and as soon as we stopped going that route or like once I got into a little bit more knowledgeable about things like kind of the injuries all went away right I feel better now and I know people are like oh it's probably bullshit but like I feel better now than I did at like 22 my body so but if you're not injured then that, like what right what, what do you think you were doing wrong was it over just overload I think I mean we had and this isn't a knock it like anyone it was just like I feel like our program at Temple was overlooked in the strength department, right? So it was coached by our football strength coaches. Oh, and basically yeah. that's what we did. Like we did no rotational work. It was just like, and I'm super like supportive. We're going to lift heavy. We're going to move shit fast. It was just straight up. Like if you can't do hand cleans, you can't do, um, what else we do? Back squats, you can't bench press X, Y, and Z. Basically the, it was relayed to you that you, if you didn't do them in X amount of weight, uh, you couldn't play for our team. So imagine going in with that expectation. It's like I have to be able to lift this much weight to play baseball. Come on. Like, bro, what were people thinking the back squat? Like, I understand it's hip power. It's some snap. And like now when you look at your stuff, every I haven't seen you not rotate. You're always yeah. rotating your fucking body. You're always doing something off one leg. You're always doing something like, shifting direction or some fucking shit. And I'm like, yo, this motherfucker's doing this at a 6 a.m. on a Tuesday. And <laughs> it's just like, what, what what was going on back then with the, with the like, oh, barbell back squat, 12 times, 200 pounds. Yeah. That'll, that'll get you faster. It doesn't make sense. And we barely even ran too. That's the funny thing. We did like no sprint work. It's the funniest thing ever. Like looking back then, it was just like, if there was like a little bit more sense of logic of what we were doing in college, we would have produced so many better athletes i mean we already had a very athletic team but like the amount of talent and like the amount of results that we probably could have gotten better out of that group would have been so much better just like and i still have like teammates that message me and was like bro if you were 
in charge or if we had your knowledge or just like things you were doing would be like totally different. A lot of lives would be different <laughs> today. But do you think it had anything to do with like, I understand that that was like the peak of bodybuilding and this is basically yeah. what everybody was doing for strength. It doesn't it just doesn't go together anymore. You think that's something to do with it? Like the marketing and just the, the boom of that, the coolness of, I want to look like this guy or that guy. That is what trickled into the locker room. I think a lot of like strength coaches just know what they know and they feel like they're going to do what they do to get the best results. Right. And that's not saying that, you know, somebody's ways worse off than somebody else's. It's just, you have to understand that not everything works for every athlete. And that's where, you know, now we see like the sports specific bullshit that gets thrown around social media. And you have to understand that it's not sports specific. It's athlete specific that gets the job done. Because not every athlete is the same and not everything is going to work for every athlete. So that's – it's harder to do in a team setting to be that way, but it's also ideal for us to kind of have different variations of our programming so that our different athletes who need more specification of what they're trying to get accomplished or their needs actually get that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, and I know this is something we always preach like – if you're training the soccer person to the hockey, like you're doing ma the majority of the same work. Yeah. But when you say athlete specific, what is like a difference in athlete? Would you say, is it, is it twitch fiber? Is it, is it? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a, not a mobility thing. I don't want to make like excuse. Oh, this person's got a mobility thing. Yeah, and now yeah. we're just trying to, you know, do X, Y, and Z to get them more mobile. But you know, if it's a strength thing, if it's a glute issue, if it's a hip issue, if it's a loading issue, those type of things, right? If somebody has trouble flipping their hips, if someone has trouble doing, you know, getting into getting some extension in their like 40 yard dash or like their start time, stuff like that, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to go out of my way to pair exercises that are going to be able to complement that and help that out along the way. And but my programming, I don't, I don't differentiate too much off of it. And no, maybe that's just either. where I'm at. Like it, it, the program is a program and then. I kind of go from there, right? So I kind of see how what I want to get done. Also, obviously, I listen to the athlete because that's a huge part of it too, like their goals and their wants and their needs and just trying to understand what and where they've been struggling. So going in with those two conversations of me knowing that I already kind of know what we're going to do. At the end of the day, we're trying to get faster. We're trying to get stronger and we're trying to be more athletic. I already have kind of that blueprint, but I know it works. And now how can I layer in some of what they want and how they see it to kind of feel like, okay, I'm getting what I want. Yeah. no, but Yeah. You build that rapport that way and kind of makes things easier. I feel like you were the, when you first started explaining to me, I felt like it was like, you looked at it like dieting, like the, the rules are the rules of dieting calories in calories out. But for each person, it's going to differ. Maybe you need a little more fat, maybe a little more carbs, this or that. And then you're like painting a picture of the finite pieces for the soccer player, for the girl who needs whatever, yeah. hip rotate, whatever kind of nonsense that um, jump variations, you know, you want more speed, whatever. But like generally, if somebody said, news, I've been in the gym for six years, I'm doing the, 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 the lifting stuff. I want, I want, I want to be faster. I want to be stronger. I want to accelerate more. And he's thinking about playing one of these sports where you accelerate. Where would you tell them to start? Well, we're going to get some foundational work, right? So I'm mm -hmm. always going to make, I'm always going to – I like trap bar deadlift more so than barbell. I know you love the trap bar deadlift. <laughs> you love jumping around with the trap bar deadlift. I do, I do, I do. Uh, and that's all part of the process. We get to that eventually. If I mean, and that depends too. It's like do I have this person long enough for an off season or whatnot to get into that? Mm -hmm. I'll get back to where to start in a second. But it's like, man, you could get someone in a program, do the same shit with them for four to six weeks. And if they're – progressing and getting better you don't have to change anything and I think a lot of coaches struggle with that to kind of figure out where to take it next but if you have like an off-season program it's four to six weeks and you just see them getting better and better you don't have to change much right sometimes you know a lot of coaches get caught up in analyzing data and this that and the other thing this right here is all you need your eyes you can see it right Whatever you see is going to help you become a better coach. So if you see something is lacking, you see someone's not able to move correctly, or you see something is just like they're in a constant state of struggle with a certain exercise, mm -hmm. change it, right? You could just tell. You don't have to get so watered down and 
data and whatnot. It's great. Don't get me wrong. It's a great tool to have. But at the end of the day, nothing works better than what you can actually see with your own eyes. And I think a lot of coaches just lose sight of that. No pun intended. But <laughs> getting back to like where to start, man, deadlift, bench press, you know, squat variations. Those are our big three. We're always going to go for that. And our sprint work, man. I can't stress enough. It's probably the best Sprint exercise work. we can do two, three times a week, depending on what time of year, where it is in season, out of season. Guys got to run, right? And it's just everybody like across the board, so right? Everybody you across the board. Everyone, should... everyone, every sport, every sport, no matter what position you play, pitchers too, like sprint. I hear, I have these conversations with people constantly. It's just like, oh, should I make my pitcher sprint? Yes, because what are they doing on the mound? They're fucking accelerating out of their movement. Mm. Like, out of the windup, you're accelerating. <laughs> Sprint. So, so people, like, the best exercise. Like, people don't have their college athletes sprinting? Man, I, to be honest, who knows anymore? Is that like that? Oh, my God. Because it's just so – like, the industry is so watered down now with Instagram and social media. Everyone's an expert, and they don't nobody know shit. And but no one like, trains anybody. That's the best part. That's the weirdest shit. And you could, yeah. I can tell because you know you taught me some shit, and I just, I, I'm used to the bullshitters here. But like, if you're a person listening to this, like, yo, I'm, I'm this makes sense. I want to be more athletic, regardless. I think everybody should be athletic. Um, how do, how do they tell the nonsense from the, from the non nonsense? I'll tell you real quick, man. If you give me ten minutes with some another trainer. Instantly, you could tell. You could tell instantly. Like, where's that? It's almost like I had someone visit from, I think St. Louis, another trainer guy trying to get into the uh, the field, or I think he's still a trainer, or whatnot. Super nice kid, and it's just like, all right, the way I'm describing what we're gonna do to you is almost like a meal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start with this. We're gonna build the palate to this. <laughs> We're going to get you this and then we're going to come full circle and you know, like that flavor type explosion mm -hmm. at the end and tie it all together. And it's almost like that aha moment to see why we started, what we did in the warm up to getting to our last exercise of the day. And it's like, man, like if you can't tie these things together, what are you doing? I will like, say I'm just I, picking out random shit. I don't I, I think you underestimate like I think you have this like this artistry about this that most people pro like I, I haven't I spoke with a couple guys that just look at it more mechanically like, you're looking at like like an art form like especially with that yeah. comment like that's fucking that's what an art, a chef would say and like yeah. I think that's why you could feel it a little bit more and it, I think it just takes years of like reps what works what doesn't what happened with this person that looked like this that was doing this issue like it just takes a lot of time and I think people just try to like they're not putting that individual effort it's like oh, I want to say the right thing I'm going to say whatever's sort of the right thing but people like yourself are like yo you're full of shit on your fucking stupid instagram <laughs> dude it's it's bad it really is it's crazy how uh full of shit a lot of people are in our industry now but yeah that's it i mean a lot of people get views and they get their likes and that's all a lot of people care about so it is what it is i mean obviously instagram is a platform now it's just like it's dying so I know you hate it, but TikTok is taking off more and more. I was waiting for the <laughs> fucking TikTok sell from from Carmon. I just got but, on there, so I, I don't. I don't you like did, bro. You've been I'm on this for six months now. <laughs> How long you been on TikTok for? Seven Not months. I stopped. I, I was on that. I just got off it because it's a cringy ass platform, man. It really is. So here's the thing with me now. Now I hired like I hired social media people. I'm like, yo, tell me the breakdown. And I'm like, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm reveled at the fact of like how these little algorithms, like for you, it's different, right? Cause you're doing more movement. Say for like a podcast, if you make your face bigger, if you make the text, I'm like, this is what people are worried about. It's all yeah. ran off of like bullshit. And I right. do it. And I'm like, Oh, it works. This is beautiful. Like, oh, that's great. <laughs> like I get it. But I do think there is something lost in translate. Like no matter what we say, the human touch is what's needed, but definitely in your fucking field, not really in my shit, but like, just un like you have to go digging a little more to know what's right and wrong and even like educate yourself before you just dive into like, I've realized every big fitness guy I've ever heard of V shred or they're all bullshit artists. Like all of them. If anybody who's like, when you, this is what I learned from, from one of my guests here, shout out to John. Like the second 
you love or you you get obsessed with somebody, just go to Google, type in their name with criticism and just see what pops up. And then you'll see some of it's not true, but like you could at least use some critical thinking to be like, oh, this guy's kind of full of shit. Like, I didn't know that, that, you know, or that, you know, whatever. That dude, you know who I'm talking about, V-Shred? Yeah. Is that the guy that pops up and... Pops up everywhere. all the ads, yeah. Pops up everywhere. He steals all his shit from Athlean X, and I had no idea. And he, he doesn't Jeff. actually know... Jeff, whatever his fucking name is, yeah. And all they'll do is they'll target, like, um, beginners, and it won't work for guys like us, but it works for the beginners, and then the beginners are off to the wrong start. And then you have you on here saying nobody knows what they're doing and it's the fucking cycle and you have to fix it. It's, it's, right. it's fucking, it's wacky. Like how, it's how, funny. Like you, who do you like people don't train anybody? Like I, I and it's another conversation. I had somebody's like, dude, and maybe it's just me. And like, I don't like think about these things. Like, I, and it's like running off like the people I worked with. And I'm just like, Oh shit, I did work with this person. And I'm just like, like, it doesn't register to me. I, that's why I'm just like, I feel like I've just been in this and doing this for so long. It's just like world champions, you know, like fucking NBA players, MLB players, NFL players. And you're just rattling off these things to me. I'm just like, oh, okay, that's cool. And it's just like another thing. And I'm just like, all right, like, don't you get excited to do that? And I'm just like, I don't know if that's like me. Maybe you mm-hmm. can help me feel that. But like maybe I like I, I get excited, but at a certain point I'm just like I just feel like it's just what I do. And I don't know if that sounds weird, but I No, I'm dude, not like, at all. Like you I think part of being successful and part of like being a forward thinker is like you're not really looking backwards. Yeah. And like even like now you look I, I wanna tell you this. We're we're gonna get this month, we're probably gonna get two hundred and fifty thousand downloads. That's a lot for me. That's not like that's like how that's many awesome. fucking views you get on a fucking on one post, whatever. But motherfucker, Carmen's been here when we were getting four thousand. And like you look back at it, and I never post to my personal because I was like, I don't I want to keep this separate. And all of a sudden yeah. you start and all of a sudden everybody's just coming in. And I'm like, oh, this is probably what Carmen felt like like fucking three or four or five years ago. Like it's weird when people start seeing it for like what it is, but I, I, I've never looked back until like the last couple of weeks. I went, Oh, I hear this person on you, that person on, but it is a fun thing when you could, especially you who's trained all these professional athletes, like, Oh shit. Like it's, it's good. But I guess to your point with the training, most people are not training people in person. Like that sounds so weird to me. Yeah. I mean, and, and you see it like all these big, like performance sites and whatnot. It's just like, it's so watered down and everyone is just like, taking shit from other people and that was like a thing it's like people use my that was happening to you right yeah it's just like almost like the instagram grocery store almost just take it and then they're posting it i mean it is what it is like you can't really do anything about that but it's like just common courtesy if you're going to like swipe something from somebody at least throw them a tag a little shout out you know you ain't getting no shout outs i can imagine i mean it's just the thing like i mean i'll never and this is just me because, you know, if you, ha- I feel like if you have a following or whatnot, you're instantly like considered not a smart like trainer. Some people are, it depends on the circle that you're in or whatnot. Like, I know personally, I'll never be considered like the smart trainer, but there are a lot of smart people, smart people with my air quotes that like to steal my work. That's all I'm saying. First, like things that I do instantly, just like. I mean, I think if you were a little uglier, Nucci would probably help. <laughs> be honest. I, I, I believe me. I know, I know the deal. That's part of There's going to be haters. And I think it's, I don't know. Cause it, even like I see people in my space, I see people like just selling shit and like, I'm going to have this fucking quantum energy that you're going to take. Like people are just out of their fucking minds. And it's like, there's just going to be people that suck it up. And I guess the, you have to, I try to cater to like a certain person who's aware of like, what is bullshit? Right. What is not like, you're getting real shit when you, when you listen, like what? Could be I'm an asshole. I don't care about that. But you can at least get honesty and like not we're not trying to sell you a fucking fake bag of goods. Like the point of this is to like get out of the matrix so you don't yeah. have to do five or six years of fucking around blowing. Like, bro, how do you keep people's knees right with all the jumping you're doing? This is all I think about is knees. Yeah, like knees? I'm saying not not your knees, people's <laughs> knees. Like, just, or is this like a, a myth that like just jumping up and down all the time and doing a lot? Like, because I feel like no, when you see it like the bigger picture, right? You see like the outcome of like a extension of a program, right? Mm-hmm. So something that I'll post, I'll be like maybe fucking 
six to eight weeks, even more so into a variation that I'll add in to like an extended program. It's mm-hmm. so like a lot of these advanced jumps and whatnot. I'm, we're still very much basic with our jump variations. You don't have to change up a lot of your jumping and plyometric drills for some of your people. Like I said before, like you don't know how long you're going to get some of these athletes for like some of my pro soccer players. I've had them. I was cool. I had them longest off season. I was able to kind of work with them by myself. Um, so it was like three months I had them in and you know, the weight they were able to move mm-hmm. from the beginning to the end was awesome to see how much faster they got, how much more explosive they got was pretty cool. So you're working with like five professional soccer players and the jumps they make or like seeing them from day one when they come in or like how they're kind of deconditioned, like beat up from the season to, all right, we're going right back in there. You got three months. We're going to get after it four or five days a week. Let's go. And then right back at it. So that was cool. What are these guys or what are you telling them to do for, uh, for recovery? Rest, nothing, <laughs> relax. I'm a big like heat guy over cold. I yeah, know sauna seems to be where it's at. Shit, but... shit for that. But at the end of the day, I'm more of a heat guy than uh the cold. But that's just me. But I mean, you think about the amount of volume and like extended running that goes into soccer, like the amount of that volume, like mm-hmm. rest, lay down, go for a walk. Don't do anything too strenuous for your rest days. I'm like a big proponent of just like chilling for your rest days. Like all this active recovery. Cool. If you want to do that, do that. But at the end of the day, just relax, sleep, let your body heal. Sleep's You're the really- best thing, man. It's the best thing for you. If you get eight hours of sleep. See, this is why Nucci is a bad salesman. I would be like, listen, we got I got a cold I am, plunge. Man. I got a cold <laughs> plunge. Use the, use the fucking code Nucci15. And then you got a bad the- salesman because you know what? <laughs> I get fucking results when I work with people and I get that's people the, better. So <laughs> that's the same way I do it. You sell by not selling. That's the, the yeah. easiest way to sell. No. And that always makes sense. Like, listen, I like a sauna. And I like it more for the cardiovascular health of like, I don't want to have a fucking heart disease in 20, 30 years. But yeah. in reality, what works? Not sleeping is the fucking is right. the easiest thing. If you sleep right, eat right, work, sleep, train. Man. Yeah. You gotta um, stop like staying up. You guys gotta stop staying up, playing video games all night. Staying. You gotta deal phones. with this. Yeah. Professional athletes. Yeah. I I would be jacking their phones. Could you take their phones from them? Me? No, 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 no. no. I'm that's, not doing that. I'm not grade school. <laughs> I heard that's what they were doing on the Dagestani camp, ready for for UFC 284 this this week. That's what I really. Saying. Yeah, Khabib was doing that to to the team because he was like, "What well, thing?" I think it's funny when you go out, right? So you'll do like warm up everything and, and you're like doing all this visual work and you're like trying to open up people's like uh, peripheral vision and like getting people to like kind of see reaction to what, yep. what, yeah. And then, you know, you come back in or like you're getting ready for the game and then it's right back no into worries. this fucking tunnel, right? So what are you doing? Like get away from it. It's like three hours. Give me like two, three hours. It's fine. Pre before the game, just have fun for three hours. That's it. Yeah, just get off of it. Even not even like just for the workout too. You run right back over to it. You're addicted, bro. Yeah. Unfortunately, I I've tried make some bullshit resolution this year. One was just to get off the the, the Instagram because at least I can imagine your Instagram is. You said like, that like an old man. The Instagram. Uh, oh, the Instagram. Got yeah. stay dude, off the Instagram. Dude, I got it. Dude, my Instagram like. Okay, real quick news. Be honest now. Don't make me look like an asshole. Three <laughs> things that pop up on your popular page. What are they? There has to be some sort of working out, I would imagine. Uh, tattoos. Tattoos. Working out. Working out. Oh, yeah. And Come on, be honest. Be honest. Haircut stuff. Haircut. No booties. There's no booties nah. on your Instagram popular page. <laughs> I cut my own hair. Okay, fine. I'll take it. I cut my own hair. I was looking at the cuts, man. Well... I just got Brazilian, Spanish, and Asian <laughs> booties on my shit. So this is like what – at least you're getting something. Jesus. You're getting a haircut thing. <laughs> you're getting whatever. You're getting all po- like positive stuff. I'm All I'm getting is being a savage, a disgusting savage. And I'm not going to lie to you, Carmen. I had a whole system. Just oh, I, got, I, I got girls listening to this. Uh, am I get in trouble? Probably. I don't care. If you have under 10,000 followers, you're getting a DM from me. 
I'm pretty <laughs> much I'm pretty much shooting 73% from the field under 10,000. Over 10,000. You're going to get me in trouble, and I ain't even saying shit. Oh, that's my plan every time. Once you give the face, that's not getting edited, by the way. Not edited, <laughs> none of it. No, it's on me. But seriously, once I took it out, I just set it to like 30 minutes a day. I've just been more productive. I feel better. And I don't, it's just going into the hole of booties for me. What do you, what do you fucking want me to do? I had, I had hole of booties. I had it working so good because you would just message, will you marry me? <laughs> Smiley face. Will you marry me? Smiley face. Copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy is like a fucking degenerate. Yo, That's I'm your really, I'm really going to get in trouble. No, well, some, then some, yeah, it's a whole situation here. Um, what do you suggest? Anything good for an intro? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I used to do, what was it? The flame back in the day. Just the flame? It was the flame. Oh, you've been, you've been fucking, you've been wiped up for too long. Which we got to get you. It's, it's, it's hard <laughs> out here being single. Okay. I got to send, I got to get creative. Maybe a, will you send marry a, me smiley face something? Send a, send a dog emoji. Dog emoji. Yeah. Send a dog emoji. And then just be like, if they question you, it's be like, oh, I was wondering where that guy went, wandered off to. <laughs> You're such a fucking asshole. <laughs> but you left. Bro, it works. Honestly, you just so, see, I don't think about this. I'm going straight. I'm going straight for it. You can and name uh, the dog and everything. You can have a whole play on the dog. Where'd the I, dog go? Yeah, do it. Do it. Let not, me know how it goes. Please I got you. It. I'm I'm gonna you're the king of Instagram. I gotta, I gotta take care of it. The king okay. of Instagram. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna switch this for a second because this is what I've started doing this Thank year. You. It's been it's been said. Appreciate yeah, it. yeah, I got you. I got you. I could tell. I could tell by your face. Um, <laughs> here's the thing I've been doing this year because I was like, yo, can't we say more time? There's deaths in the family. We got to just start looking at like, I can't get rid of the bullshitters. So I basically don't listen to anything anybody says anymore. I just go off of people's actions, right? And when you start doing that, shit sucks. People are terrible. Like people say one thing and then they do another. Oh, and yeah. I just, I've been having a real struggle with that this year. Like, oh, I would say loneliness of like, does anybody do the right thing? And is anybody like a good human? Like, obviously you're like one of the, the, the handful. And we always say this to each other. We, we know that by this point, but like, what the fuck are these things you even think about? Am I just too, too deep into this noosh of like trying to figure out who's good? Like, should I even be worried about this shit? Cause this is like, what keeps no, me up. man, Sm- small circles. Just keep just a small keep it circle. Small. I dealt with that a lot when I, I feel like I first moved to Chicago. Like, I was in the wrong circle, and that kind of just bit me in the ass real quick. Like, wrong person, wrong work, everything. So it was just, like, wasn't ideal. I was super, you know, out of it, and it was just, like, treading water. Like, constantly nowhere to be found. But, like, things work out in the end. I feel like it, everything kind of was where I needed it to be. Found the right group of people, right person. yeah. I think that's what I've been trying to do. Like podcasting, I've kind of, I can just block people. That's fucking easy. Like in real life, it's like hard when it's like, yo, your boss says one thing and then this right. says another. And then this person Oof, says, man, I'm not trying, I'm not going to throw any other people, but like the last couple, last gym or whatever I was at here, oof, it was bad. It's like exactly what you're saying. The rules that apply to some people didn't apply to the other people. And it's just like, I just want to train athletes. I'm not here to be a group fitness instructor. See, like I, you, it, I, I'll do it, but at the end of the day, like I respect my boss, bosses where I'm at now, and they're great. They treat me like family. That's the other thing, not to get off topic. People throw that word around way too much. That's like right for me. That's like right up on like telling somebody you, you love them, like oh, you're family, right? That that's a big word to throw around. Because if you're family, you don't fuck with people, right? Nooch, you can't talk about some shit. I can talk about shit because I don't give a fuck. Uh, yeah, so right. this is my boss. This is the way it is. I don't care. I'll get fired. It doesn't matter. You can't fire me. I'm untouchable. Uh, <laughs> I'm untouchable. I'm untouchable. The tru- Here's what happened. I'm really going to... I'm I'm Just so you know, Nooch, this is going to blow me up in the face. There's going to be girls not talking to me no more. I'm going to get fired. It's going to be... This is this was it. No, no. no. Seriously. My boss was, would do that, that whole shtick of like, we're family. I'm like, okay, you're family. Your son and I are principals. We're taking over the company. So if you're going to treat your son X, you have to treat me X, right? Because I'm not a person right. of like, I don't ask for, um, I don't ask for things. And I've learned in this world. Same. Dealing with, yeah, you're like the same way with me. But dealing with old school Jewish guys with about money, you got to ask. So I learned to like, you know, well, you got to do this, you got to do that. And then they forget. And then you redo it. 
and it, it's just be, it becomes frustrating at some point. It's like my issue is like, how do you even decipher? Like, even if the person keeps saying it, we're family, we're family, we're family. I'm like, you're like a son to me. How do you rem- like even tell if that's the truth or if you're just making shit up in your head? That's that's my shit. So this is still to be seen. We're gonna find out. Motherfucker gives me that seventy thousand dollar raise, bitch. But um, we're gonna find out. Nooch. I, you don't seem yeah. to worry about this stuff that much, though. You, this stuff doesn't seem to like. You seem very calm, always. Like you don't seem to be like a. This stuff's gonna keep you up at night. No, I mean, I think that was just how it was brought up. When your dad's uh, a fighter, kind of always know when to show your cards and when not to. Ah. So yeah, I always I'm very calm, but like, yeah, it's there. No wait, wait, wait. I want I want to go deeper into this. This is good because I, I need to have a, a big combo at work, and I'm not I'm not good at this, Nooch. I'm not good at bringing up uh confrontational conversations like a normal person would be like, oh, this is the situation, and I'm gonna get emotional, I'm gonna lose it. So you're saying you learn from your father, don't show your emotions only yeah. when you have to. Yeah. Because hmm. I've well, never really and, seen and you. And then get... it's like, well, that's the thing. And then it's like if you show your emotions. Granted, a lot of times the emotions end up, you know, getting into a fight. But like that was like way back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> you can't hit anybody anymore. No, I can. I can get very angry though. That's the like I kind of snap. Yeah. Like, I, I, that's the thing. I don't want to be like a fucking Looney Tune of like I just want to. No. I want to go in there and just be like, listen. There's ways of having adult conversations, right? Like, you know, have all your bullets in the chamber. Yeah, and know I feel like to, evidence like, is the key. Yeah. Just have evidence. Have a fucking document. Which we got. Yeah. I'm giving up. I'm giving up all my pieces. He's coming back February 30th, Nooch. So we're gonna we're gonna find out. Yeah, I mean, sometimes those uncomfortable conversations are good ones for your growth, right? It I helps. think it's the only way to like. What are you not gonna have a a serious or important conversation or uncomfortable conversation your whole life? So I'm like, I know I got to do it. Um, hey, man, you you talk for a living. Use your voice. In that circumstance, so, too. So man. I do. So I do. I got to be loved, though. It's, it's weird. Bro, it's weird because, like, right. getting somebody to like you or, or the love thing. Okay, that's cool. Find a camaraderie. Cool. But then when it comes down, my issue is figuring out, like, what is selfish and what is not selfish. Like, oh, am I just being the dick? But it's like, you've been somewhere seven years. It's time. People got to pay up. The the price The price is due. Let's just say that. So Yesterday's price is not today's price. Got that right. Wait. <laughs> gotta, I'm gonna write. You may just have to write down some points for me, Noosh. I feel like you would be better at this than I am. I'll choose, you know what I mean? the fat Joe line. <laughs> I like no, no. I like that though. I'll, t- I'll take. It. I'll take. It. Um. Yeah, bro. What else you got coming up? Anything else you want to plug? Are we doing anything else? What's going on? Uh, what am I doing? What's going on? Um, I think I'm headed out to Florida to do a uh, podcast with Phil Deru, uh, MMA fighter trainer guy. Yeah, um, yeah. big guy he trains Timberland got yeah, a lot of yeah, yeah. MMA fighters out there uh, Deerfield Beach looking forward to that he was supposed to be a guy who was supposed to be out in uh, Ukraine with me when I went out there and did the Kiev Sports Summit but uh, unfortunately I think he didn't go because of the whole COVID deal but I'm looking forward to it. film some content with I him and we'll hop on the podcast Um, he trains is he at you know, yeah bro he's at ATA is he at ATA? Amer- American ATT American Top Team yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, Nooch, yeah. that that's a big deal, bro. Meanwhile, I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. Um, I You're can't so believe you... I'm... I can't believe you just acted so chill with that. Like, I didn't know it was. I had to Google it. That that's the gym he's at, bro. That's not only Poirier. That's fucking Colby Covington. That's yeah. Joanna, Yo Joanna, Edson Barbo. Oh my god. Shit, man. When is this happening? Uh, I'm going out there, I think, the 2nd of March and 3rd to film some content and uh, hop on his podcast. That'll be fun. Yeah. It's going to be great, bro. You got to fu- yeah. just send me some pictures or some shit, and then um, you're going down there solo? Mm, probably not. You are just no fun. I can, I can never tell with you. All right. I'm done with you. Um, everyone, Carmen Del Mastro, my man, fourth appearance, crushed it as usual. I'm a little out of control. Four time. Four time. <laughs> Nooch, I'm sorry I'm a little drunk, but 
It's good. Um, Pose the effect, people. Thank you, guys. Apologies for my alcoholism, but eh, whatever. Uh, click the notes below to find Nooch, uh, his program, to find his Instagram, whatever. Uh, as always, <laughs> stay safe, stay positive, stay blessed. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.